So, the soil structure interaction is important in the analysis, many structures, civil engineering structures, as well as ocean engineering structures, we have to assume the support given by the soil. So, if you take a residential building, what we will be having is, we may have a isolated footing most commonly used. So, what will you assume as a boundary condition for this isolated footing? You have to assume boundary condition for analysis. All of you know that there is a problem like this, no, a portal frame. How many of you have studied analysis of a portal frame? Raise your hands. Okay. What is this boundary condition means? What is this boundary condition? Hinge. What is the difference between fixed and hinge? Hmm? Moment is? Moment is? What is it? Moment is restrained. What is the boundary condition? You know what is meant by boundary condition? What is boundary condition? Displacement. Displacement then? Rotation. What else? Rotation. 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 How many displacement and how many rotation? Three rotation. Three rotation and three displacement. For a fixed uh, condition, boundary condition, what happens to the displacement and rotation? Zero. 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 For a hinge? Displacement. I mean rotation. Displacement is zero. Rotation is not zero. That is what we. Do. So there is an isolated footing here, multi-story building. What is the boundary condition? Fixed. How many of you have gone and seen the foundation for new hostel blocks being built, ladies' hostel and gents' hostel? Huh? You want to raise your hand or not? <laughs> <laughs> I am not going to ask question because I have not gone there. You have also seen, why not the others, huh? why you are not going and seeing, simply go and see, it's always better to go and see the structures and they are being built. <coughs> so the, this, uh, some people use hinge, some people use this as fixed, this all depends on how much depth this goes into below the sea, below the ground level and what is the type of soil here. If you have a very good weathered rock, what type of rock is there? near gents hostel. You have visited both gents hostel and ladies hostel? <laughs> huh? Only gents hostel. <laughs> what type of soil is there? This fellow also has gone. Huh? And gents hostel or ladies hostel? Gents. Huh? Huh? What type of soil is there? Hmm? It cannot be clay. In Sassel, it is a highly weathered rock or sometimes it is very good rock also. Ladies Sassel, you go and see, most probably it must be clay. Hmm? So, if it is a clay soil, then we may have to use it as hinged and if it is a, a rocky strata, we may have to use it as fixed. All the four by Sassel, what we have built, we have taken into rock, top surface there is a clay and as you go deeper and deeper we get rock. One of the hostel the rock is at about 2 meter below the ground level, another hostel the rock is at about 4 or 5 meters below the ground level, we excavated up to that and then put it into the rock. Ladies hostel we have a lot of problems both Sharavadi as well as uh, I do not know about the new hostel, there we have very soft clay for a very deep excavation because we have the lake. All of you might have seen the lake, no? From, from the lake, uh, there is extension of that uh, clay particles is there. That is why it is coming. If it is fixed, the displacement will be more. There, there is a displacement here, right? Suppose you draw the displacement diagram for this. It will be like this. It will be like this. Who, who, any mechanical engineer? Huh? <laughs> what is the difference between this curve and this curve? Is there any difference? Displacement, point displacement is mentioned. Oh, 
what is the difference next you are also mechanical no ha uh, what is the difference this is a displacement diagram this is another displacement diagram what is the difference in the displacement diagram next ha huh? in fixed boundary condition we are restricted at rotation also ha huh? the rotation is zero at that point in free hinge point the rotation is zero. So whatever she is telling uh, is correct. I am able to understand, but most of you may not understand. See, this is the slope. What is the slope of the curve here? What is the slope? Zero. Zero. What is the slope here? The slope is not zero. That is the difference. And if you see the deflection between this point and this point, deflection may be more here compared to this point. this is for a building so in harbor structures what we are having is we may have a piles and we may have a deck on top of it and we may have the seabed here and we will have the water level here This is the top level of the structure. Let us assume that is plus five, and this is the charred atom. We'll take it as zero point zero. We assume the bed level as minus fifteen point zero. This we'll call call it as a founding level. This depth we'll call it as. embedment depth so this is the top level of the structure where we have the beam that beam center line i am taking it as plus 5 this is the charred atom which is 0.0 this is the dredge level and i am taking it as minus 15 and this is the founding level now you tell me how much should be the founding level how much should be the embedment depth hmm what it should relate to bearing capacity ha huh? bearing capacity it should relate to one of the dimensions here height above the ground level so this we will call it as unsupported length it should relate to another dimension what should be the what is the dimension <coughs> diameter of the pile <coughs> so embedment depth is equal to how many times the diameter of the pile 3 times 3 times 3 times means the structure will fail <laughs> unless if it is rock okay unless it is rock you see let us assume that this is the pile which i have marked okay suppose this portion only is the embedment depth i hold it like this and apply a load like this what happens it will fall suppose i hold it like this and then push it the pen may break <laughs> but it will not fall down okay so uh, 3d is not sufficient then how many d's it should be huh 30 30 <laughs> 30 means you will become a pauper by building the structure <laughs> it depends on the type of soil okay the other parameter is a type of soil generally it is between 10 times to 100 times diameter of the pile if it is a soil soil means it is a sand or clay sometimes we have very hard rock 
rock means granite and things like that. If you have that type of rock, you will not have any possibility of going up to 10 times the diameter of the pile. Okay. What should be the diameter of the pile? Because in this problem, we have not given the diameter of the pile. What should be the diameter of the pile? It should relate to some dimension or dimension. Hmm? Finally, it depends on the axial load and bending moment. Okay. <laughs> Finally, it depends on that. But based on the dimension, what is given here, you should be in a position to find out the diameter of the pile. Huh? Spacing between the pile also is important. That we will see later. Spacing depends on diameter. Generally, this uh, spacing between the pile, it should be greater than 3D. Or D is the diameter of the pile. Why it should be greater than D, 3D? Huh? Do not interfere the pressure bulbs. Pressure bulb. Pressure bulb bundle. I am not going to draw. <laughs> but uh, answer is correct. But uh, I cannot explain it at this le level. So this is the center to center distance we are asking. Okay. This is 3D. This is your D. Minimum gap between these two should be diameter. That means center to center distance should be minimum two times the diameter of the pile. Okay, if the, pile, the piles are very close, then it will hit one another and it may not be able to give the resistance to the soil. Soil is supporting the structure. Suppose there is a force which is acting on this direction, this pile will support the soil like this, this pile will support the soil like this. So, it should come and hit. So, if it is 3D, the capacity of the pile, foundation capacity will be the same as a single pile. Otherwise, if it is a group of pile, if it is very close, then it becomes a difficult. But minimum should be, you should have a clear gap of D. There should be some physical gap between one pile and another pile that should be equal to the diameter of the pile. If there are diameter of the piles are uh, different, it should be equal to the larger diameter of the pile. Okay. The maximum normally they use is about 10 times the diameter of the pile. So, it should be between uh, should be less than about 10 D. That is the spacing between the pile, but after fixing the diameter of the pile, you have to fix the spacing. Okay. But how to fix the diameter of the pile? Hmm? It should relate to some dimension. What dimension? Hmm? So, there are only few dimensions here. <laughs> Uh, unsupported length. Suppose this unsupported length is L, it should be equal to L by 15 to L by 20. This is the range, this is based on experience, but there is a there is a provision in IS 456 where we have to check for serviceability of deflection. There they have given the span by depth ratio. should be less than 7 for cantilever and less than 20 for fixed beam. How many of you have seen this provision? I think it is 28 or so for simply supported. Any of you have seen this in IS 456? Raise your hand yeah. you have seen, <laughs> really you have seen. Okay. This pile is it a cantilever or fixed? Huh? Can't 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 what is it? Hmm? See, today's class, uh, what we want to do is we want to find out a depth which is called as a this is called as virtual fixity. What is the meaning of virtual? Virtual memory we are talking, virtual fixity depth we are talking. What is the meaning of virtual fixity depth? Hmm? We are assuming imagine, imaginary. What is it? 
Yeah. What you are telling is correct only. <laughs> Go ahead. What is it? Sir, we are assuming that is that will be presenting. We are assuming. No, you said one thing. Imagine. <laughs> Imagine. Huh? Imaginary. Imaginary. It's a imaginary thing. It's not a real. Real means it doesn't exist in a practical sense. It's a imaginary point which is called as a fixed return. That means this is fixed. Fixed like this here. Okay. All of you told cantilever. Cantilever means what? This is cantilever. Okay. When you fix it here and uh, put it here for this, can you say that this is cantilever? Huh? Is it cantilever or not cantilever? Then what is it? What is it? Propped cantilever. <laughs> <laughs> you are coming for class. Paper, kaila paper, kade yade, pena kade yade. And coming directly from Holi. So this is restraint. against <coughs> rotation and displacement what about this here you see this is the this is the figure i am drawing it there the same figure only i am drawing is it restrained against rotation yes or no huh is it restrained or not restrained restrained means the slope should be zero slope is zero against rotation but not displacement so this is a boundary condition <laughs> all of you know effective length huh effective length you know <coughs> what is effective length Zero bending moment to zero bending moment distance. Huh? Distance between the zero bending moments. Zero bending moment. What is the effective length for this? Points are it. For a cantilever, what is the effective length? Huh? You come to consensus. Two L only. <laughs> what is the effective length for? Uh, this it will bend like this what is the effective length whether you are civil mechanical all of you should know this okay what is the effective length for this hmm? 0.75 0.75 you told it is distance between 0 deflection 1.2 ah. see it will bend and go and meet here at zero deflection this length is the relative <laughs> length so between this it will meet at the same point same but this deflection is like this if you plot like this it will go and meet here this is your effective length now suppose this is about uh, 20 meters Minus 15 to plus 5. If we take L by 20, this is equal to 1 meter. Here, what I was telling is, span by depth is equal to less than 7 for cantilever. That is for this type of condition. It should be less than 20 for fixed beam. Fixed beam means both the ends restrain, right? But uh, we can take. That is why I said L by 15 to L by 20 because this boundary condition is not same as fixed so it should be between the cantilever and the fixed beam is it clear that is why we get l by 15 to l by 20 but this is an approximation don't take uh, too much weightage for this particular case but approximations are always better you should know the value initially very close to the real value then you do the analysis and then go on improving the diameter 
okay. Diameter of the pile depends on some more parameters that is what is the grade of concrete to be used and what is the steel we are using. So, it also depends on this. Suppose we use a lower grade, we have to go in for L by 15, but actually speaking we should take the length from here to here, not this unsupported length, but based on experience we have taken this as L by 15 to L by 20 is sufficient of unsupported length, but actually you have to take the total length. This is an approximation which we use it for calculating. So, this embedment depth should be equal to 10 to 20 times the diameter of the pile that is one consideration. What is the other one? Some of you told it should be a function of unsupported length. How much it should be embedment depth? Embedment depth is equal to some factor of unsupported length. How much it could be? 2 times unsupported length or 1 time unsupported length or 0.5 times unsupported length. Huh? 1.5 any other answer it is a very difficult to say, but generally we take it as 0 0.75 times unsupported length. But this is not always true in Cochin we have very soft clay there the embedment depth may be even equal to 2 times the unsupported length. In Jaigad which is near Ratnagiri, anybody knows where is Ratnagiri? Huh? No one knows Ratnagiri, so please go to the Google map and find out because these are all locations where we have very good uh, harbor facilities, it is in Maharashtra, hmm? between Maharashtra, Bombay and Goa it is there. There we have a very particular problem, we have soft clay deposits up to about 30 meter water depth, below 30 meter we have only rock, granite, I do not know that is granite, it is not granite. We have different types of rock, one is granite, what is the other type of rock? Huh? Granite is one type of rock, what is other type, other names of rock? Basalt. Then, which is stronger, basalt or granite? Huh? This fellow is answering. Yeah, you are mechanical engineer, no? Civil. How do you know basalt and granite? <laughs> How do you know? You heard granite and basalt. Civil engineering students, you have studied geology, no? Which is stronger, granite or basalt? Basalt is stronger than basalt. Basalt will be equal to M60 or something like that. But you may have granites of higher strength, but in general, basalt is stronger than granite. So in uh, Jaigad we have basalt, and uh, that is there only about just below the seabed. We cannot uh, chisel out the rock. So there they have given embedment depth is equal to only three times the diameter of the pile. This condition I was telling now only this much penetration it was holding it like this basalt, but this basalt is very strong. So, a strong person hold this pen it will not rotate, I am not very strong, it will not rotate, so but there we are used. So, this is what we are doing, so there is so many points that we have to discuss to find out <coughs> the fixity depth. The point is how much should be the fixity depth, fixity depth should be This is embedment depth and this is your fixity depth. Fixity depth should be less than the embedment depth, it is generally 50 percent of the embedment depth. How to find out this fixity depth? That is what we want to discuss. So, we have to find out this, uh, this formula is given here, from this we have to find out the value of T and R, value of T and R is uh, this T is uh, some kind of uh, length 
unit is length it is a function of uh, there is a mistake here I think it should be E i Young's modulus of pile and the moment of inertia of pile and uh, it also depends on k 1 and k 2 these are the constants related to soil this k 1 and k 2 is given in uh, this table this uh, is equal to horizontal subgrade modulus these values are different for type of soil k 1 is for sandy soil k 2 is for clay soil the sandy soil is defined as loose sand medium sand or dense sand and uh, this is some spe this, this you do not have to consider now this, uh, this is very loose sand under repeated loading there are two cases one is dry another is submerged dry is uh, when there is no water table in the foundation but our case we should take only submerged this is the value which you have to take because it is under water so if it is a loose sand it value is 0 0.146 if it is a dense sand it is 1.245 and that you have to substitute in this formula k1 from for this you have to get the value of t which is equal to fifth root of e i by k 1 e is the Young's modulus of concrete i is the moment of inertia of the pile pi d power 4 by 64 r is the equivalent length that is the fourth root of e i by k 2 this is for clay soil. So, clay soil is defined by unconfined compressive strength varying from 0.2 to 0.4 it is very soft clay medium stiff clay stiff clay and very stiff clay for which the values are given here k 2 values. So, you have to find out what is the unconfined compressive strength of the soil and find out these values what is the type of sand and find out this value and you have to substitute in this formula to get T and R any doubt in this you should know the diameter of the pile to calculate moment of inertia you should know the grade of concrete to get the Young's modulus you should know the type of soil to get the k1 this is the fifth root of ei by k1 this is fourth root of ei by k2 this is some equivalent length this depends on the rigidity of the pile as well as stiffness of the soil it is a relative pile length or so we can call it it depends on the relative stiffness the k1 and k2 the units are kg per centimeter square ei will become kg per centimeter square then there are uh, two figures which are given one is this uh, continuous line that is for free head pile another one is a dotted line which is for fixed head pile this is for sands and normally loaded clays and this is for piles in preloaded clays preloaded clays means already there is some weight on top of this so we have two sets of curves the one set of curve is for sand and normally loaded clays another set of curve is for preloaded clays and in each set we have two curves one curve is for fixed head that is this is the for fixed head that is for free head fixed head means what i have drawn here this is for fixed head free head is just like a cantilever so if the beam depth is very small what is connecting the pile then you can call it as a free head then the x axis is l1 by r or l1 by t y axis is lf by r lf by t so the figure is given here l1 is the unsupported length le is the founding length and lf is the virtual fixity this is your c bed so l1 is your unsupported length this is l1 this is lf this is 
चलिए सो वॉट एवर फैक्टर यू आर कैलकुलेटिंग आर आर टी फ्रॉम दिस वॉट इज दैट यू नो इन दिस कर एक्स एक्सिस एल वन बै आर आर एल वन बै टी वै एक्सिस एल एफ बै आर आर एल एफ बै टी वाट इज नोन एंड वाट इज अन्नोन इन दिस एवरी थिंग इज अन्नोन वाट इज नोन वन बै वन एंड टेल वाट देर आर अबउट वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव वन टू थ्री फोर फोर फैक्टर्स आर देर फोर वेरियबल्स आर देर एल वन आर टी एंड एल एफ अवट ऑफ दिस फोर how many of the things you know l f is the only unknown l1 you know that is unsupported length r and t you can calculate r and t you can calculate once you know the soil parameter and the pile diameter so suppose you calculate l1 by r is equal to 4 let us say l1 by t is equal to 4 then you have to go to this car and if it is a fixed rated pile L1 by R is equal to 4, LF by R is equal to very close to 1.9, LF by T, so LF will be 1.9 times T. Okay, is it clear? Once you know this uh, T and L1, let us say L1 by T is equal to 4, then you go here, go to the fixed rate pile, and corresponding to this, you find out what is your LF by T that is equal to slightly more than 1.9. so this figure is valid for long flexible pipes where the embedded length le is greater than 4r or 4t so this embedment length if it is greater than 4r or 4t then only this figure is valid otherwise it is not valid okay so let us see one problem the t is coming about uh, 3 meters for this problem diameter of the pile is 1 meter so we will discuss about this tomorrow's class but for example i am telling for a diameter of pile 1 meter t is coming 3.08 meter l1 by t is 4.9 lf by t is coming 1.9 so 1.9 times 3.08 becomes 6 meter so depth of fixed in terms of diameter of the pile comes to 6d that's what we are giving so here the cut off level of the pile is 3.975 edge level is minus 11 so this is your unsupported length the founding level is minus 24 11 24 means 13 meter is your embedment length you calculate the fixed depth using this formula it becomes what is the diameter 60 is uh, something wrong here 6d means it is 6 meter Sixteen minutes should become minus seventeen only. There is a mistake here. This should be minus seventeen. So this is the virtual fixed depth. This we will see in the next class.